everybody. Welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by again. We're having a great time here. We're painting a beautiful red and white van along the ocean side. Ocean waves, crashing waves. We have trees, we have rocks, we have a beautiful sky. We have all kinds of interesting details here and we're going to paint this step by step as we go. So just, uh, you know, take your time. Uh, work along with us here. I cover again all the steps and all the methods and techniques that you need to create this painting. Um, it's just a matter of starting at the uh, beginning of the video, watching how we draw everything. I explain it clearly. We have subject. I have my subject matter up in the right hand side of the screen. So I'm using my phone. You'll see the van we're going to be creating here. You'll see that on my phone up in the screen. Uh, so you basically see everything you need to. Um, create this painting and then we do a little more improvisation by creating a tree from a photograph online and then we did the rock here pretty simple and the ocean across the horizon line here so you're gonna have a fun time creating all these gorgeous uh, subject matter here in this painting and the colors and the washes it's gonna be a lot of fun so come along with me here on the journey we're doing watercolors everything watercolor on my channel and um, we'll get started right away All right, we just saw the finished painting, so we're actually going to get started here on our drawing. So the first thing we'll do here is you'll notice um, we have our uh, VW bus here, and um, I'm actually going to do my uh, just a an out an outline like a border around my my paper, just so I can kind of plan things out in regards to having a border around the paper. And then I'll just move this here for a quick second and put this over here, like so. And then I'll put my subject matter up here. So this is a fun way. This is the a la prima method. Pretty much, you know, um, I've learned a lot of things over the years. And one thing I, I really keyed in on a number of years ago was kind of just getting down to like two basic kind of methods or techniques when, when it comes to kind of creating a painting. You can, th you can think of it as either a la prima which is kind of like just going in and doing everything at one time. So maybe you're drawing your drawing first and then you're going in and you're painting everything at one time. So you're not, for the most part, you're not going to really be doing any kind of really light washes over anything first and then letting that dry. You're pretty much just going to go in and pay, paint everything at one time and just so, sort of start in one spot, usually your main focal point, the main subject matter. And then you go from there and you just start building out your painting from there, pretty much drawing it first with, you know, a nice contour drawing, preliminary sketch first, then a darker line over that sketch if you need to or if you like to. Um, and then from that point, uh, we start painting and we just, again, start in the one, probably more or less the focal point, the, the main focal point of the painting or the main subject matter and then working out from there with our paint. Uh, now that's different than the glazing technique and we always talk about the two methods we usually mainly use, the, the either the glazing technique or the a la prima. So we're going to do the a la prima here. And then on, on other paintings, you'll see, going back into all my other videos that I have in my archives here on YouTube even, uh, you can always go back and search, uh, you know, my name, Chris Petrie. And then if you type the word glazing, you'll probably find, you know, 50 paintings that are all done with the glazing technique. And then if you type in Chris Petrie a la prima, you probably find, you know, another 50 paintings where I probably put it in the title of the painting, a la prima, just so that you can go back and look at my archived um, tutorials and you'll kind of get to see both of those techniques and methods working uh, independently from one another. And you can always use both of the techniques in combination to one another. But if you learn both of them kind of separate, eventually you'll kind of be able to use in those two methods or techniques in interchangeably anytime you want to. It'll just be a part of your technique, so you might not think of it so much all the time. But most of the time, you kind of will look at your painting and say, hmm, do I want to do this a la prima, or do I want to do it like uh, uh, the glazing technique? Usually, you kind of have that thought of your subject matter when you're either going to paint from a picture, a photograph, something from a phone, from a magazine, if you're out plein air painting and you're creating some paintings outdoors at a park or a local place or on vacation or if you go to a workshop or anything like that, you will kind of 
have a gut sense of what do I, how do I want to approach this painting. So we'll cover the alla prima here and we're going to do this really fun, beautiful uh, red VW bus and then we'll put some surrounding information. Maybe um, we'll, we'll, let's get this, the bus done first. Let's draw that and let's make it, I always say, let's follow. Let's follow good um, artistic um, fundamentals with the way we're going to create this painting. So this might be something where you're going to take one subject matter. Maybe it's a VW bus. It could be anything. It could be a, your favorite car or a house or something. Anything could be, um, you know, still life, maybe flowers or some fruit and whatever. It could be anything. So we're just going to try to create like a grid maybe and say, here's the grid like this. So it's a cr basically four sections like so. And then we can decide most times if you're going to create a painting, you're going to want to have your uh, subject matter in one of these four locations here like this one here, either here or here or here or here. That always looks good. You can also do it in the center. Um, that's also another great technique of just putting something right uh, slap dab in the middle. Um, but let's just say we we follow this one here. Let's pick one of these four sections. So I'm going to say we'll take this uh, our subject matter here, our beautiful red and white VW bus, and we're going to put it here. So that's where I'm going to do that. I'm going to say I'm going to make the decision as I'm creating this painting from scratch. I'm going to take this photograph, say, OK, I'm going to put my VW bus, my main subject matter right here and uh, like that and then these other three sections I can do anything I want I can add some trees or maybe a city kind of scene or maybe a bridge in the background like going over a river or something really cool like that or the ocean it's up to you you can create any kind of background you want in these spaces over here uh, and we just tie it into this but this will be our main section so I hope that kind of really just uh, solidifies your thinking on if you want to just do a creative painting like I'm doing here and just kind of start from scratch and say, oh, I want to take a cool idea, some subject matter I really, really like. I like the look of that bus. It looks so awesome with the red and the white, the windows. The, the It's like a classic, like, um, you know, maybe a 60s or 70s style vehicle. That's probably in the 60s, I would say, that um, VW bus there. So... You take that idea and you say, I want to put it in my painting. I want to paint this specifically. So I put it in one of these four spaces here. You can choose any one you want. And then from there, once you choose your one spot, you're good. Then you can just create the rest of You can go and look and find other paintings, other photographs to put other information into your, your painting. This might be something where you someone hires you to say, I have a VW van and I want you to paint that, Chris. Or for you, you're the artist. Someone asked you, uh, can you please paint me my VW van? I just had it restored and painted and updated and it's, you know, I want a painting of it and I can put that on my wall and it reminds me of my, my VW bus. And you can say, well, of course, I, I can do that. And then you would know right away if you're going to create a painting for someone, you might say, okay, I'm going to create a painting for you. I'm going to put your VW bus like here. You might sketch out a little idea like this and say, I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to put some other information here. What other information would you like me to put in? Is there any favorite um, background scenery you might like? Maybe some woods, like an outdoors, like maybe park type scene? Or do you like the ocean? Do you want me to paint an ocean in the background? Or whatever it is, you know, and you, you talk with your um, person that you're creating a painting for, a commissioned work. And then uh, you get your information. Then you might do a couple small mock-ups like this. M maybe small little, you know, three by five mock-ups of the scene and the show that to them and they say oh yeah I really like that one with the ocean in the background or the trees or whatever it is and there you go so just a fun idea you're going to encounter these things when you start painting as an artist once you start painting after a couple years and you have your artwork on your phone your iPad you know you have some in your maybe you at work you pin up one of your paintings or you have them in your house and someone comes by to visit, inevitably someone is going to ask you, can you do a painting for me? I'd like you to do a painting. And you'll have that happen numbers of times as you go. So always look forward to that as an artist. 
eventually as you perfect your skills and you get better and better, you're going to have people asking you to do things like create paintings for you or for them. So when someone asks you to paint a painting for them, you already have a game plan. You kind of know some things you can use to get your painting laid out correctly so it's going to look good and you're not maybe scratching your head too much and wondering how do I do this? You'll kind of already know you can use the basically the four spaces of your and then we say we're going to do our bus here. So I'm going to put this back up here like that. I'm going to put this up here so we can all see it and then we're going to create this. So I'm going to take the bus and put it here. I'm going to put it quite a bit low in the picture here so it kind of feels like it's setting down in the painting solid. That's the only thing if you choose to put your, let's say this vehicle, this uh, VW bus, if you decide to put it up here in one of these two sections, it might look, it might have a tendency to look like it's floating off into space. So that's where you kind of can uh, ask yourself that question, you know, do you want to keep your subject matter lower in your painting? And you could put it up here, but then you might have to put some things in the bottom of your painting that make it look weighted down like a large rock or something like that. So you'll you'll figure these things out as you go. So I'll start out with a light preliminary sketch. You might not be able to see this, but what I'm going to do is do a light preliminary sketch. The first thing I'll do is kind of just get the basic shape. So I'm going to try to get the basic shape of the... And it, it kind of trails back this way like this. So I'm kind of looking at the angle. Good. Looks good. This angle here is a little bit this way. It's not quite straight. It's a little bit this way. So I want to make sure I have that going back this way a little bit. So it's a little bit on an angle downwards this way. Just getting the basic outline, the silhouette of this. Then here we have the Now if I look at this section here, the front windshield, um, I'm going to go over this darker with a darker pencil line. Please don't worry about it. I just have to get myself situated here with a really light pencil line so I can adjust things if I have to, if, I, if things don't look at, as they need to. So I'm looking at this here and this would be the windshield. And the windshield's uh, quite a bit higher than the bottom of the bumper. So I want to make sure I get that correct. That looks about right, about there. And the windows go back here, and they stop about there. And there's quite a bit of um, metal uh, roof over the top of the window, so I just make sure I remember to capture that. And then I look at the um, let me get my eraser. I just want to make sure if you need to erase a little bit, that's why we do a light sketch first. So you can erase a couple lines if you have to. But I did notice that this section of window is quite a bit larger than this over here. And it doesn't, again, have to be perfect, but we want to get it somewhat accurate. And I kind of noticed too, as I'm looking at this VW bus, it looks almost like a bullet train. And maybe that's, uh, maybe when they designed bullet trains, they looked at some of the vehicles that were made years and years ago for the faster speed, the high speed trains. And uh, so I think I have the basic, silhouette of this. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'm going to now do the basic silhouette of what I, I've come up with and you'll tell me if it looks it looks good. So I'm going to go up over here and again it doesn't have to be perfect. We just try our best each time as we go with our drawings. We get better all the time too for practicing. That's always a good thing to recall. More practice is equals better drawings. Now, uh, let's see here. 
All right, so I just promised you I was going to do the outline, the silhouette of this vehicle, this VW bus. So this is the silhouette I came up with. And it's got the rounded, like this. And this looks a little bit, so I'm going to do the tire here. And again, I'm not too worried. But that's somewhat how it looks. Uh, the angle of the tire might be a little more like this. And again, always remember, please remember, always remember, your drawings, your pencil drawings are always going to look like they have problems with the angles or the um, shapes of things. Pencil drawings always look a little funny, so don't get worried. You get it the best you can where you're at. As far as, you know, if you've been practicing and do, if you're doing your 10, 15 minutes every day, as much as, you know, as much as you can, it's just a matter of you're going to get better and better and better and better as you go over time, over the years. You know, it takes years to get good at drawing. So that's why I say do 10, 15 minutes every day. This way you're going to constantly improve a little bit by little by little by little. If you say, I'm going to practice once a week or once every couple of weeks, you'll probably have, a, you won't be able to learn how to draw, you know, well, because it really does take a, a, con, a really a, a good effort um, daily of 10 or 15 minutes a day to, to really build your skills as, you know, drawing. So that's why I always mention that. I don't want anyone to have any illusions of, you know, how to get better at artwork or things like that. You have to really put in the, the little bit of time. It's not a lot. Just 15, 10, 15 minutes a day and you should be good. And you'll constantly get better. Okay, so that's my silhouette. And again, pencil drawings always look a little funny. You don't get worried. You just get it as best you can and then you move on and you keep going. So now I'm going to do the windows. And I already have the pencil, light pencil sketch created underneath this here. So now when I'm drawing, you're seeing me, you know, do the, the drawing here. And I notice that this is a little bit, it's a kind of a thin line over there. And uh, we can do the... Um, Let's see, now we have this portion of the front of the VW bus, which the front opens up. The front opens up and swings open so you can get to the engine. I'm pretty sure that's maybe not. Someone that's an expert with these vehicles will tell me I'm either correct or I'm not correct. Someone might have one of these buses here that I'm drawing. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to leave a message in the message, please do, in the message section say, Oh, Chris, no, that front part of the vehicle does not open up and flip up like a, like a hatch like this. Maybe you get to the engine through the interior of the vehicle where you open up a large um, compartment and then you can get to the engine on the inside of the vehicle. This might be the um, seam of the body of the vehicle for the door to open, which I see the door is here. So, again, there's a window like a side window here and then this is the door window here and that angle goes a little bit that way and another thing too is don't spend as too much time trying to get everything perfect three windows here so one two and three like this so we'll try to make those a little bit like an angle and then back here is the, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So then we have the door here that goes alongside here. And you have to have your handles on the door, otherwise that will not look good. And then we have the paint. And the paint comes across. Then this is where we look at our front of our vehicle and we say, where does this, 
where does this red and white color scheme on this vehicle, where does that, how does that flow? Well, I notice that if I take this part of the vehicle and I say, all right, this is the red over here. And then over here, there's a bumper like this. And then the bumper comes around here, sort of underneath, like so. And then there's a license plate over here. So now I'm just using all small things that I can draw into the drawing that kind of help me to place all the other lines. Can you see how that works? Like if I have my bumper down here on the bottom of the vehicle, this bus, then I put my license plate here on that bumper section which is wraps around the front. I can clearly see that this license plate is way up over here. I put that in here, then that automatically gives me where the point of the front of this beautiful white and red white um, point comes down. This almost looks like an eagle or a, like a bird-like uh, shape on the front of the vehicle. It's almost like a beak on the front of this, this vehicle. That's probably where they, what they were thinking of when they, the, the great people that designed these vehicles, they probably use animals and all kinds of interesting things in nature and like that to come up with designs and they don't just maybe make guesses at it. They, they use things like that, like animals and things when they create color schemes on designs of vehicles or shapes of vehicles. They might use animals for the curves of their vehicles. That's all kinds of cool engineering stuff. So we're just having a fun time painting this so we don't have to worry really. So that's kind of, that looks good. I think we have it. We found that the angle here comes down across right where the license plate is, the license plate is here. Can you see that? Is that pretty much... That's a good plan, right? If you can get the front bumper in first, once you get the silhouette of the vehicle, you, you can get that bumper across the front. And there's a light over here too. We can get, we can get that in now too. That's kind of like this. It's like a, a light there. And that's the red stripe here, or the red paint here on the front. And then we can do the, um, we're going to make that kind of that, it's good to maybe make some slight lines to kind of get the flow of the vehicle, how it's kind of shaped. So the more we can kind of incorporate the uh, curvature of the front of the vehicle like that with some light pencil lines, then we can kind of get the front emblem on the, on the vehicle good. So now we can kind of see that this is not a circle, but it's an oval. So, uh, yes, where you see that's an oval there with the v Volkswagen emblem. And then we also notice that um, it's kind of hugging over to this side more, that VW emblem. So let's kind of keep it like this. And I think that looks pretty close. And then we just do the V and then the W underneath it. And we just have to keep it like that. So I think that looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect again. We have the tires and the rims. We're gonna have fun with this. Once we start painting this, you're gonna see when you start painting in something like this, you just have fun. We're not going to get overly ex uh, concerned about, we get the drawing as best we can get it, and then when we paint we just have fun painting, and it'll work out good because it's going to be a, a fun experience of painting it. And then we have a mud flap back here, so we can do that, just to get things pretty accurate. And uh, that bumper goes actually to about there. So I just, like that. Then we're going to do the shadow under this. Now the shadow, the light's coming from this side of the picture, this way. And I know I'm going pretty long here. It's already been 20 minutes. We'll take a break now in a, in a second. I just want to get the shadow shape underneath this, because you can see it's a really pretty dark shadow 
on the side of this vehicle. We're going to make it lighter than it is in the picture. We're not going to make a big a production of the shadow on this vehicle. We're just going to maybe put it in like this and you can kind of see. So this this whole area here is going to be in shadow, but we're going to make it a little bit lighter. We're not going to make a again a major production of the shadow because that might take away from the look of this. But we'll work on that as we get to it. But now you can kind of see we have everything set up. It looks great. And then we'll come back and we'll do some more drawing in the background to kind of give some more interesting uh, backdrop for this uh, painting. Okay, so again, this is just a fun painting doing the alla prima method, taking uh, your favorite subject matter. It doesn't necessarily have to be this. Um, I also noticed, too, I left out the uh, front light. So I look to see where that might be. And sometimes you can leave out details. You don't have to draw in every detail, but a front light of the, on the vehicle is, is very important. That We're going to have to have that in there. And then we have another one up here, too. That's like a signal. I think that's the fog light, maybe, and the signal light up here. And then over here we have the other light. And then the other light over here. All right, we'll be right back, and we'll do some more of our backdrop drawing. Okay, we're going to continue on here. Let's finish up our drawing. We got the main focal point, this beautiful VW uh, van, or bus, we call it. Sometimes a bus or a van in America. And uh, we got all the details we need for this. We're absolutely set. Then, now, we're going to... Let's take a ruler. I think a ruler might be really good here. Maybe we're going to do a little bit of like some ocean background. Let's pretend we're on a beautiful trip here and we have a VW bus with us and we're packed up with all kinds of great stuff in there, backpacks and our easels and paints and paintbrushes. And we're going to do some painting along the shoreline, the coastal area. And we're, uh, we're going to have some munchies in there in the, in the, in the van here. We're doing a little uh, weekend trip or something. Just have some fun. Let's think about some cool ideas like this. So I'll take the um, the ocean and I'll put it maybe a little bit below the, um, maybe it would look better higher up in the uh, scene. I'm trying to think how that would look. Or is it going to look better, the ocean? I think it's going to look better higher up, actually. About a third of the way up, maybe a little bit above a third of the way up. So I'm going to look at my paper and say, all right, how, well, we could always look at it and from a point of measuring and just saying, all right, let's use our ruler here. How big is this frame that we just drew in for our drawing? Uh, it's 10 inches. Well, what would be thirds if we have 10 inches? Well, we would say 369 is pretty close to thirds, so a little bit better than 3 inches is about a third, so this is one third, maybe 3 and 3 and three eighths, and then 6 and a half maybe, so something close to that. So this is thirds, a little bit above, a little bit above the third. I think I'm going to make it right about where the windows are on the This might even look good too, so that we kind of bring the line across from the vehicle windows right straight through. That might look pretty good. Or we can go up here and make the ocean. This might be the best way to go. Putting the ocean through the area where the windows are. And what that'll do is that'll help us to create the illusion of three-dimensional quality looking through the windows of this vehicle. Because that's going to be a sharp line of the ocean the distant ocean. So let's do that. Let's make the ocean like so, so that we'll be able to see through the windows on the VW bus, or the VW van here we have. And then that will actually, again, create some three-dimensional quality to this painting. And again, we're just having fun here. We're just kind of planning out ideas as we go. This is something, again, you would do if you were hired to create a painting for somebody. You would start working out these ideas, and we're just working out our ideas right now. We said, well, where's the ocean going to look, the a distant ocean, the horizon line of the ocean going to look best? Well, I decided it's going to look good if I can kind of take that distant ocean, 
horizon line and carry it right through the windows of the, the VW van here, like so. And then that's a really key ingredient to this painting and design. And then I'm thinking too, we have a heavy VW bus over here. Um, it, it might look like the painting's gonna tip over like this. Like if you see it as in balance, we're always, we talk about balancing in paintings and I'm always trying to bring a little bit of um, design elements into my videos here. So from a balancing standpoint, and I have to be very careful with magic markers, that'll bleed through onto the watercolor paper. I'm gonna use my China marker here. So let's say we have the painting like this, just a quick idea of it. And then we, we sec sectioned it off into quarters. Then we put our bus here. This is a heavy bus here, right? A, a, a van. That's a lot of weight. So if we're thinking of it as like a seesaw, and this is a seesaw, and this is the balancing of it. If you have all the heavy weight of a vehicle on this side of the painting, it's going to kind of feel like it might be tipping over. The painting might be feel like it'll just, it'll look that way maybe if you're looking at it from a distance or if you're viewing the painting on the wall when it's finished. It might look like it's tipping over this way. So let's put a counterbalance over here. Maybe we'll put a rock over here, something like that. Maybe a rock over here that might look heavy and a tree. And then that'll balance it. It'll make a few more balance. So we kind of have that that feeling of the seesaw. You know, we don't want the seesaw to look like this. If we have our painting balanced, we want to keep our painting balanced for the most part. I mean, you could create an effect of having it feeling like it's tipping over, but generally you'd want to have a more balanced painting with your subject matter evenly balanced within the uh, rectangle here. So just an idea. Okay, so now I'm going to create a rock over here. Like this. There might be some water over here. And then a little bit of a hill. So there's a little bit of a rock here and a hill. And we'll have the shadow. We can see the shadow of the rock here a little bit. Same as the VW bus, a little bit of a shadow. Lights coming from here. Maybe we'll be disciplined and say, let's get our shadow insignia up here. Like that. So we know the light's coming this way in the picture. We have a shadow there for the rock. And it's a long shadow, so it's maybe early in the morning or late in the day. And we have our ocean in the background. And I think, let's leave it like this. Um, maybe we can do it like maybe a couple tree shapes over here. Maybe some bushes or tree shapes. Maybe a pine tree or something. So we could do that. We could do a pine tree maybe over here. Just kind of sketching out a few lines just to say that's a pine tree I want to create. Then when I go to create this pine tree and paint it, I'm going to go find a picture of it online or something so I can have a better, um, something better to work from to get the overall look of my pine tree over here on the left. But right now for just sketching it in, for design purposes, I just sketch in some pine tree ideas. We kind of know pine trees, a lot of times the, the branches are kind of, you know, straight, they're level as they go up the tree like this versus like a normal maple tree or a fir tree. You know, the, the branches are on angles like this, like on 40 degree angles. Pine trees have more level for the most part. There are some branches that on um, pine trees that curve upwards like this, but a lot of times they are like that. You'll notice that. Okay, so we have everything. We're ready to paint. So let's uh, take another quick break. 
I'm going to make sure I have um, everything filled in here. My, uh, I think I'm low on a few colors, so I'm going to fill these up in a second. I'll take a break. I'll get some fresh water for my water container, and then we'll start painting. And again, we're going to have a fun time with this. We're going to do a really, really loose sky with not a lot of details, just kind of... I'm going to show you how to fire in a beautiful, uh, happy sky with, with no worries, and we're not even going to do any pencil lines for the clouds or anything like that. I'll just show you how you get a really simple, fun sky going, and um, we'll do it. Okay, so let's uh, continue on the journey of this painting, and we will be right back. Okay, so we're ready to paint. We have our paint supply. Ready to go. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water, maybe, just to make sure it's uh, a little bit of moisture there. Um, I have some paint left over in my in my palette, so what I'll do is maybe just I'll take a paper towel and I'll just clean up the palette just a little bit here. And then we will <clears throat> actually, since this is a la prima, the fun part about a la prima, one of the fun things about and great things about a la prima is you really, you know, you can take your time more. Uh, the glazing technique's a little faster, and you kind of have to make sure you pre-mix everything first on your palette. Whereas a la prima, you can really take your time, make your mixtures as you need them. So we're going to go with uh, the, the red and white. VW, so I'm going to get my cadmium red. I think I might need some cadmium red. I think I can make do with this. I'll scrub around there and get some. Usually you, you kind of don't want to scrub. I'm going to get some red here. I thought I was good on my cadmium red, but it's not good to scrub around. It's good to have a lot of juicy paint in your palette. Because that runs into issues if you're halfway through the painting and you run out and then you know it's just better let's so I'm using my Winsor Newton cadmium red I use quite a bit of cadmium red especially with figures but you can see now now I have more really nice paint to work with and then again with a la prima you have more fun with colors mixing colors so let's get some burnt sienna let's use some orange so we're going to try to make this red really exciting and dynamic and not just say oh let's make it one red no let's how many reds do we have here we have cadmium red alizarin crimson we have also rose matter let's put some rose matter in it so we're going to take all these reds and create our red color for our VW van here. Plus some cerulean blue. We want warm and cool everywhere. We don't want to just go with all warm. we got to have some cool to that too. So let's use some green, some Viridian green, and some French ultramarine, uh, cerulean blue. Viridian green. Let's take some French ultramarine blue too as well for that. Maybe even a little bit of purple. Ultramarine violet. Windsor Newton. I use mostly Windsor Newton for probably 60% of all my paints are Windsor Newton. And then the other other colors I probably go to also is my um, Holbein paints. So Holbein and Windsor Newton are my two, two paints that I use probably, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the time. And I'm going to rinse my brush. I'll have a tissue on hand. And I already smudged or something over here. You can see that, I guess. I don't know. Yep. No worries. We'll cover that over later. Let's get our cadmium red. A little bit of all of our reds. Orange. And I can even see some of these. And again, I'm not going to really... And this is a uh, Da, Vinci, da Vinci travel brush. Pure Kalinsky, 1503 Germany. 
So that's the brush, the exact brush I'm using right here, which is a number eight. I'm going to try to use this brush for the whole painting and not change any other brushes. Just have one brush, number eight, Da Vinci Travel Brush, Pure Kalinsky Hair, 1503 Germany. So that's what I have here. And again, let's have fun with this. I'm not going to... Um, I'm going to try to even paint in some of the things I might not have drawn in with my, if you can imagine, we, we don't have to, you won't have to draw in every detail. You can kind of paint in some of your details. You can see here I'm painting in some of my details with the bumper. So I didn't draw in every detail with the bumper. I realized when I go in here with my paints, I can actually get, get some really good um, shapes and things by just painting them in and not even having to worry about. And that's the Alla Prima method. You can paint as you go. And that looks like that's just a touch of red there. That's good. I love it when a plan comes together. And then here There we go. So I'm already getting in some really cool looking colors. Maybe some, let's get in some blue a little bit there and some green, some Viridian green. Just to make sure we, this is Fabriano Artistico paper. I'm letting the paper do the uh, the paint do the work, right? I'm just going to get that on there and let it mingle around some more green, so that we have a little bit of warm and cool. We're painting around the bumper here. And that's what I'm impressing here is try to just let the paint do the work. Just get get lots of mixes of colors in here. Don't make it one color, please. Please don't just get one like cadmium red and paint the whole thing cadmium red. Get all the other ones, all the other things that are close to red. You know, we have alizarin crimson, rose matter, uh, cadmium orange even you can mix in here. Like we did and even burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, let's use some burnt sienna in there too. And you'll find that if you're mixing up lots of colors like we're doing here throughout your whole painting, not just on the van, you're going to see we're going to do the same a la prima method of just getting lots of beautiful color out onto the paper and letting it mix and mingle on its own. And you'll find that you're really going to have a wonderful looking painting. And then I'll pick, lift up some paint here. I see some light, reflected light from the road. Or something is reflecting there. So I'll just try to swipe along here. And there we go. Maybe some. What I notice is a lot of the the gum Arabic is pooling up in my cadmium red, so I'm really having a hard time with it. I don't know what happened to that tube of paint, but I'm noticing it's giving me a problem every time I squeeze out. I gotta f deal with that later. Obviously, I can't figure that out now. But that's the first time I really recall that happening. Or not the only time, but I noticed that my cadmium red, for some reason, the tube, what I'll do now is just quickly Again, I don't want to waste time messing around with my paints. So I'm just going to try to stir around that cadmium red a little bit. For some reason, the tube, all the gum arabic inside the tube of paint went to the top of the paint tube so that when I squeezed out my paint, a lot of the gum arabic came out, that clear liquid part. So no worries. That only happens every occasional bit of times. 
hardly ever, so it's never an issue. I just want to make sure I don't get caught up with fixing something and then the paint's drying and not looking good. So I'm back here just trying to get this going again. So I think that's good. Wow. We have all the paint now. Um, maybe some blue and purple for this lower section here. So it's a little bit darker, and I'll try to get that in right now while it's still damp. Like that. And I'll even start to think about the um, tires. Let me get a little more red right over here, like that. Then we have some French ultramarine blue, maybe some burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. We'll start to get the tire colors. So let's get the tires, make them like a dark brownish blue. Here's where we have to be careful. with our tires. I'm just going to go around like that. There's a mud flap there. And then here, I'm just going to do this. And go right around like this. And that's what I'll do. I'll leave the tires really, really simple and I'll try to shape them as I go here so that they look okay. Tires are really difficult, so if your tires get a little bit uh, wonky, don't worry about it. You just kind of let it, let it go. Don't worry about it. You're going to practice tires then the next time if you haven't been practicing your tires. Okay. So you just remember that if your tires get wonky and look funny looking on this painting, that'll be something you'll be working on in the future, little compositions and things. And then you can always help it by putting in the shadows now. So this is where we would start to work our shadows. I'm not going to get, again, I'm not making a dark shadow like we see here in the picture. I'm going with a lighter shadow. And I'm putting some red in those shadows too, because we know that the shadows are going to have the color of the van reflected down in there. And this is where to try to keep the shadows purple like this, to try to keep the shadows light. I'm using lots of water. Maybe I'm making them darker here, but I'm going to try to go lighter than And the shadows are more cooler, obviously. And I'm just going to, instead of filling it in like one big block of shadows, I'm going to try to maybe just sort of not fill it all in like one big block. Maybe I'll just do some splashing. Kind of a little safer to do it that way, right? Instead of just making one giant big block of color of shadow. But again, this is mostly cool, so I'm going to make sure I get lots of... Then I'm just going to try to blend that in like so. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. And again, it may look funny to you right now as you're sitting back watching me do this. But trust me, when we finish up here, it's going to look fine.
And again, this is our reference photo, as you can see. But I'm not going to really, once I get the VW van drawn in, like we did in the beginning, now I'm going to kind of not really follow this so much for all the other fine details in this. Right now I'm kind of going to divert to my own game plan now in this painting and start using my own creative juices here. And we're, you're going to do the same thing at home. You're going to say, okay, I see what Chris did here. Chris got the van, you know, he did the drawing of the van, got that in, looks good, looks okay. Then he said he's going to create a, a distant ocean, which is not in this picture, this photograph, obviously. So once you see me do that, then you know that I'm not really so much referring back to this all that much at this point. Now I'll refer back to this for any details I might do for maybe some shadowing on the white part of the um, van here and then up on the rooftop of the van. But as far as the background and what we're seeing through the windows, that's totally different than what is here. I just want to make that kind of, you know, I just wanted to give that tidbit of information so you kind of see that I, I use something uh, here in this photograph to, to a certain point, but then I let go of that and say, now I'm shifting over and creating the rest of the painting according to what I'm, what, you know, as, as an artist, you, you will do that. You will say, okay, I got the drawing of the van. I've got that. I did it. That's good. Uh, now when I'm painting it, I'm going to use the color scheme of the van. Good. But then after that, then you start to drift off into your own knowledge of what you already have in your toolbox of knowledge. And you say, well, yeah, I'm not going to make this giant dark shadow here. Maybe I'll go a little lighter. Maybe it looks a little better not being so harsh and dark. But you can, you know, adjust your painting as you see fit. You want to do it, you know, your own way. But I think it looks better, maybe a little lighter with the shadow. And again, we did the background totally different. So we're going to stick with our own game plan here of the ocean in the background, some trees, a rock, and a really beautiful sky. And so we're pretty much have everything we need. We could actually take this photograph now and set it to the side and, and do the rest of the painting. We really maybe don't need it as much, but I will try to get some of these shadows. So let's do that now. Let's get some shadowing on the, on the van, on the top of the van here. And I want to also just erase that line there. There was a pencil line on there that didn't look so great. And there we go. So I'm going to try to get this, this shadow along the, the roof of this van like this. And there's some quite a bit of light on top of the van. Again, the light's coming from the um, top here. Let's use some gold. There's some gold in here too. So warm and cool everywhere. And I notice back here there's some it's white, but it does have some kind of like golden and bluish. This is the shadow side of the, the van. So there's going to be blue. And then over here it is kind of a golden color like this with some blue. It's got a lot of blue, a lot of shadow. So here you're going to see I'm going to kind of try to get blue and gold. on the van, on the, the nose of the van here, like this. And then over here, I'm going to leave it white, pure white paper. And I'll just soften out this line here so that it kind of fades over there, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of gold, light. So it's light is gold, yellow ochre, or raw sienna that. Okay. And we are moving right along here. And trust me, we are really... And if you have a color that might not look so great, I was trying to get a little bit of the... There's some yellowish gold on the, on the mirror here. And some darks too. And then also too we have this. And maybe that's all we have to do is a round shape there. 
just a little round shape on the rims of the tires and that might be good enough. We might do something again a little bit later but try to keep your details very minimal in difficult sections like tires are very very difficult. They always gave me an issue and a problem and they still do today as I paint and draw with watercolors so tires and vehicles are actually very difficult to paint and draw. So I tend to go really sparingly with details on the tires and things like that. All right, so now that is fine. We're going to put some details later on at the end of the painting for the windows and the emblems here and the license plate. We'll do that later. I think we can leave this as it is now. And let's start working. We've been, let's take another break. We've been working quite a bit. We've worked 20 minutes already. This is, tends to be, I always set out to try to do like a 20 minute painting here on my tutorials, but it always gets to be longer than I think. So I, but I want to explain everything. That's the thing I try to do is I want to get you all the information you need to do this painting and not kind of just go too fast. And then all of a sudden when you go to do it, you're not getting the idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So I try to cover every detail if I can. So forgive me for that, but I'd rather have you have more details than less. And I know there's a lot of people that make videos out there and they're really great videos. Like they get millions of views and it looks like a Hollywood production with the different angles on the artist and what they're doing on their paper and the light and all kinds of cool camera angles. And it looks more like, you know, like a really professionally done video. And I've I'm maybe still trying to get some people to work with to try to get my videos looking a little better. But this is your bare bones watercolor site that I do here on, on a ch channel here on my. So if you like this video, please click subscribe. At least you'll be getting the nuts and bolts of watercolor. You won't be missing out on any details. If you really want to excel at watercolor, stick with me. Uh, I don't make the prettiest looking uh, videos, but they are all that you need here right here we're just focused on the actual painting itself and um that's all you really need and i'll kind of guide you through it step by step as you go take your time break it down into as many segments as you want as you're working through a painting like this but i think you will be able to create this painting somewhat uh, successfully if you just if you're following along with our process here so uh, thanks again for watching and um, i'm going to be right back and we'll start doing some of the ocean and um, that's about it. Let's get started in just a second. I, I need a quick break. Thank you. Okay, we're starting up again. And first thing I'm going to do is change out the water in my water bucket. And we're all set. We have our water new fresh water in our water bucket. So now let's do the let's do the tree here. Now what I'm going to do is let's go online and find a pine tree. So we'll take our phone. We're going to we pretty much have all that we need for our van now. Our van is complete 100%. All we're going to do is show you some ocean behind the windows of this van. So that that'll be fine. Um we uh, let's see. Let's look up uh so I'm just going to We'll go here, we're going to do a search, and let's look at, um, let's see now, um, pine trees, pine trees, and then images, oh wow, you know what, I think it's even better, yeah, let's just use this, something like this. Let's kind of look and find some cool pine trees on our phone here. So I'm going to take this off camera. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble with copyright issues or something. So just find uh, find a good pine tree online when you're looking at pine tree pictures of images of uh, pine trees on your uh, your your device, your iPhone, your iPad, your home computer, whatever you have. You're looking up pine trees and you find one that looks kind of cool and you say that's the one I'm going to use for this painting over here on this side over here. So I'm going to try to find one that looks kind of interesting. That will work good and there's lots of them already I can see that look really cool. Um, I'll tell you what, 
since I can't put it on here, uh, I might look up maybe famous artists or something like, uh, I can tell you right now that Winslow Homer did incredible pine trees. So if you look up Winslow Homer, Winslow Homer pine trees. I can't show it on camera, obviously, because that's someone else's painting. But if you look up Winslow Homer pine trees, you'll see that he really did incredible pine trees. So let's take a look. And I'm going to find one that he did and try to just kind of, you know, use it as a, a guide for what we're doing here. So let's see. Wow, he does incredible palm trees, actually, too. Actually, I think I don't think I've ever seen any better palm trees than Winslow Homer's. So that's what I try to do. I try to go and find, research other artists, um, like, you know, great artists from the past and history, look up their paintings, and I might just type in, like, Winslow Homer trees. And then if I do that, Winslow Homer trees, I'm finding all these images online of all these incredible trees he painted, and especially... Um, uh, palm trees, like tropical tile, style trees. He spent a lot of time painting in the tropical areas of the world. By the ocean. And Okay, so I'm looking here. I apologize if it's taking me a long time here to find pine trees. Um, but I think this is... Okay, I think I found something here. Let me see. Okay, I found, I found something I'll use. Again, I can't put it on camera. It's it's a, you know, it's a copyrighted image. So, for the pine tree, I'm going to use French Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, um, Raw Umber over here maybe. So I'm going to use my Burnt Umber too as well. French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Sap Green, um, Burnt Sienna. Just a mixture of colors and I don't mix over mix it, just I leave it go as it is. And let's see if, how these look. And I'm just gonna have fun. I'm gonna have fun with this here. Please don't. Uh... So I'm just gonna do little different things, like so, like maybe a couple of these type of things, right? A couple of intermittent, like kind of just pressing down of the brush, and then from there, a couple of these, like this have some happy branches like this and that's good enough let's leave it like that a couple splashes good that's perfect why mess with it if it looks good Perfect. Now let's do the rock. Rocks are cool. Blue. Cerulean blue. Maybe some of that mixture there. I'm starting to really mix around my colors. Um, rocks. Raw umber. So some warm and cool. The rock's going to be cool though. Mostly like a bluish color with some grays. And the rock will pick up some light. Since it's backlit and the light's coming this direction, the rock will be a little lighter up here along the, the top edges of the rock. And then here, it's going to be cooler, like so. Like that. And then right away, let's go in and get the shadow in there. Maybe some purple. I'll add some purple in there too, some mineral. Um, ultramarine, ultramarine violet. 
let's leave some white paper on the underside of that rock there just so you can kind of make the conclusion that there is the rock the bottom of the rock is here and then the shadow starts there then let's get some warm colors too in the shadows even some warm in the rock mixing colors everywhere let's always remember to use lots of warm and cool everywhere then some green let's use some green some green for some grass some grass feeling there so let's just try to some uh, let's do some like feeling of sand a little bit and again I'm doing some splashing And this is the part of the painting you can have a lot of fun because this is the focal point and this is you know there's so much detail in this uh our van here this beautiful red and white van the rest of this the rocks the ground even the tree over here but the tree looks really good and it's very detailed but the rock and the ground and the grass and even the ocean and sky is going to be very calm looking we're not going to go with too much detail on those portions of the painting I'm going to leave lots of white paper, which looks great. And again, here, I just want to do some warm and cool everywhere. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the license plate here. And here's where I'll, I'll fill in a couple details here and there, but not making too much of it. And again, I I don't have the picture of the v, of the of the uh, van anymore in front of me, so that's where. Now I'm not really going to, I'm going to go back to the van again later to get some more details, maybe. But I think this is pretty good so far. Let's start doing our water. Our distant ocean. French ultramarine blue. Green. Let's get that beautiful green. Burnt sienna too, a little bit of the... And let's... When I do the distant ocean, I take a tissue and I dry off my brush a little. I just put a whole bunch of color on my brush but now I gotta dry off the brush just a little bit so I can get a, a really you know I want to get a good line here and I just go a little bit at a time I don't see how I'm doing this here I'm going a little bit at a time I'm not trying to go all the way across like this one stroke right brush stroke I want to go little bits at a time and I have the line there on the paper so I, I do have the line there I'm following the line basically no big rocket science experiment here and then now this is where this really looks good when I'm going to be showing you the, the distant ocean through the van. Right away that makes you feel like, wow, I can see right through the van. It looks cool. Interesting. And then back there too, that looks good. Then I dampen my brush, rinse my brush off, dry off a little bit of the water, and then let's just start to... Soften that edge a little bit with some water. And I'm being careful to paint around the the window frames of the of the van. Then now uh, I'm going to definitely some cerulean blue. Let's get some cerulean blue in this the ocean water. And some Viridian Green. Now what I'm going to do is create waves, choppiness. I 
hope you're having fun out there. I know you're painting along with me, having a great time. This is a fun video, a fun painting to do. Okay, that's soft and quiet back over here. No reason to get detailed on that part of the painting. Your focal points are usually always in this, more toward the center. So you can like relax when you're painting on the sides of your painting for the most part. And look at that and some splashes for the water, the waves and things like that. Some of that really nice green, Viridian green. And there we go. That looks that looks really good, I think. All right, so we are really <laughs> we're we're having a great time here. And look how much work we have done. The only thing left we have to do is the sky wash. And you're going to see how fun and easy the sky wash is. I'm going to show you how to do a simple sky to finish this off. But honestly, this there's nothing wrong with this. This looks great. We have our focal point, our beautiful red and white VW van. That's our van. We go around and we put all our art gear in there and stuff. And we're going to travel around and do some painting. And then here is the ocean. We're right by the ocean now doing some ocean painting. Maybe we're over here on the side with our easels and chairs and having fun time painting. And uh, we're going to do a gorgeous sky here. It's going to be quick. Maybe another five or ten minutes on the sky and then we'll be all set. We'll be finished. And uh, you'll see how beautiful this looks when we're completed. Okay. And a couple details, of course, on the van. We have to do maybe the, the uh, sign, the emblem on the front of the van. And, uh, but I think that'll be it. We'll have everything pretty much uh, completed at that point. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're gonna finish up. I know you can't believe we've been working an hour or more already. And again, you have the freedom to fast forward and uh, rewind and whatever, whatever you like to do, you're the artist. But if you do wanna capture all these details in the painting, you have to kind of just go slow. Maybe you watch my video one time full through. This way you kind of can see everything happening as it's going along, uh, you know, kind of in a flow. Then you might come back and say, okay, now I'm going to go through it and stop the video as I'm painting. And you can kind of follow each section of the painting as I'm doing it. Might be a little easier that way. I don't know. You're the artist. You'll figure out what's easier for you. Everyone's different. Let's get to the sky. I'm going to change my water. I always mention that when you do a sky you want to have fresh, clean water for that. You don't want to have muddy water painting a, a fresh sky when you're doing a, a sky wash. Um, here, I have a lot of muddy looking colors. They're beautiful looking colors. I hate to do this, but let's clean up the palette a little bit now. Now, I rinse off my brush. I have fresh, clean water. Now all I'm going to do is take the fresh, clean water and right on the top of the, the rectangle here. Fresh, clean water all the way across the, the top. Only the top, though. Like this. Just the top of the... Like that. I don't know if you can see that. I've just wet the top inch or two on the uh, paper with fresh, clean water. Then, here and there, I add other fresh, clean water, damp, fresh, clean water, but not everywhere, just here and there. And I sort of attach it here and there to the upper portion that I just put all that fresh, clean water up top. The idea here is to have your sky look a little bit um, like there's a design to it and some clouds and some variation to it. That's why we only add fresh, clean water here and there in the sky and not just the whole thing. If we were to take water across the whole sky, we wouldn't get as much variation. 
So the simple way to get really nice variation to your skies, you probably just go across your whole top of your sky like this with fresh clean water, just so you have that nice straight edge across the top. But then once you start flowing down your sky below, you want to add water here and there, not everywhere. And then always remember to leave your bottom portion of your sky with no water because it's going to eventually start to flow down once you start mixing your blue sky in here it's going to flow down a little bit so you don't want to keep wetting the paper so if you wet the top half of your sky or the top half of your paper that's fine you can work the colors down to the bottom portion of your sky the horizon line where the ocean is that's all so we're going to get some cerulean blue Cerulean blue looks great for skies. Some French ultramarine blue as well. Maybe a little bit of raw umber over here on the side just to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a cooler, maybe cooler, like cloudy, shadowy kind of color to things. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and get the and that's all I'm gonna do. Look how fun that is. Just we're going to get in some of more of the French ultramarine blue. You can do that too, a couple spots here and there, like that. And then sort of just mix it around. And you can see that it has its own way of flowing around the paper. The uh, the colors. You just grab it right out of the palette. We've pre-mixed it as you can see. We pre-mixed our colors here. So now the fun part is just working it on down, seeing how it and that's all that's as simple as that. Here I'm very careful by the pine tree. I don't want to flood that out with water, the pine tree area, because we can go in there later and do really little bits of light with a fine point brush if we had to. But we don't want water flowing over the top of this uh, tree over here because that'll, that'll ruin that tree. It'll just start reactivating the paint, if that makes sense. So there we go. We have plenty of, if you don't like clouds maybe, or if Maybe the clouds aren't looking great or it's not happening. Just let it go and just go over the, go over things. You just keep working it until you find it looks good. And I think it's the less work you do on it, the better. So I'm just blotting up some of that puddles that are flowing down from the top. You can take your tissue if you want. Try a few lines going across like this. Sometimes that looks good. You can mix, mix and match your techniques. And then I always say, please take a tiny bit of cadmium orange a little bit just a tiny bit and go along the bottom of the ocean area with that but it's only a tiny bit not too much but it does give you a good feeling of like the warmer climate at the bottom of the sky where it touches the earth and that's really everything in a nutshell here And I am going into in the van here to put in that sky. I'm going to continue putting sky wash in the van here. That uh, orangey color along the bottom of the horizon line where the ocean meets the sky. You can add a little bit of blue maybe over here. And what that does is that kind of accentuates the uh, top of the van a little bit, the light there. So I add a little bit of blue there and then soften it up a little bit.
that looks pretty good. All right, so we're actually, let's just do a few more details here. We wanted to uh, do a little bit of um, details with the van emblem. So I'm just gonna take some brown, red, and blue. So my top three colors here, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna to get a really good dark like that. A little bit of blue too mixed in from uh, from over here just to and then let's dry the, the brush off a little bit with a um, tissue and then let's just have our em emblem and then we do this really quickly easily not too much detail as far as not much time spent let's just get let's get the basics of it in like that This is all damp in here now, in, in the uh, van area where the uh, windows are in the van. So that's all damp from the sky wash we just put in. So we wouldn't want to do any details there. Um, even though we say, oh, it'd be nice to start to do maybe some details with maybe the van. I think it's even better maybe just to go with a, a little bit of detail, but I wouldn't do a lot. I would say that that's pretty much good. I'm gonna leave it the way it is now. I think that looks fine. Okay, so I'm glad you're so glad you're here. You're painting with us here along on the journey here, the watercolor journey. We cover all the methods, techniques. We do everything. So this time we're doing an interesting van along the shore with some beautiful sky, ocean, rocks, trees. Our, again, our beautiful red and white van. Next time we might be doing some landscape paintings or maybe even some uh, beach, uh, beach paintings with sand and uh, maybe some other style uh, coastal areas that we might paint. And then we might do some city scenes too as well. So we can paint everything watercolor here. We draw and paint. I'm hoping you'll stick with me here on my channel. Again, um, I always mention if you subscribe below on the right hand side, it's just a simple, you push down on the subscribe button below the screen and then you click the notification bell, the top notification bell. And basically all that will do is just the next time we create a video, It'll be, in, when you open up YouTube, it'll be in your uh, YouTube page. So, so you'll see my video, basically, that we've created a new video. And this way you don't lose us. You might forget my name or forget the name of the video. And the next thing you know, you might not be able to find me again. So I always want everyone to keep coming back here on our channel here. Where we're working together. You're going to get better at watercolor without a doubt. It's just a matter of doing the fundamentals over and over and over again. Uh, each week, each month, and each year. We're here. I've been here for five and six years, seven years on YouTube. So uh, even actually more than that, probably now it's been eight years maybe. In any case, we're here all the time. Every week we're creating new artwork, new paintings. So you just come along with us, work along with us, and you'll have a great time. You'll create beautiful paintings like this. And um, we'll see you on the next video.